The, the question would be, I mean, this is how God is amazing. Could a 4,000-year-old covenant that God said to Abraham, could have that actually been the key in this election? And yeah. I want to tell you how. Wow. You know, what, what is it? Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. So it's not only blessing and cursing, it's whatever you do to Israel will be done to you. So it's reciprocity comes back at you. Now think about it. Netanyahu was up for election, if you remember. And it was clear, if you remember that, that Obama didn't want him to win the election. During that election, article after article came out, headlines like Obama administration using taxpayer dollars to campaign against Netanyahu, or Obama campaign team arrives in Israel to defeat Netanyahu. Uh, and again, he tried to defeat Netanyahu. What was going on in Israel is despite all the polls, Benjamin Netanyahu won the election. Obama's interference in that election came to nothing. Mm -hmm. But the ancient God made a covenant in Genesis 12. Whatever you do to Israel will be done back to mm -hmm. you. If you intervene in the election of Israel, God will intervene in this election. Wow. Mm. wow. Boys, where are we? Yeah. And, and the pattern is look at the last days of Israel. That's the key. Look at the last days of Israel um, or look at what God did. And you have, you have God continually gave windows, reprieves, mm -hmm. but it didn't stop. The, the, the judgment stops if in the window they turn back to God. But if they don't turn back to God, the judgment then proceeds. So you see this in the northern kingdom. You see this in the southern kingdom. The, the one, Josiah is the key of this because he was when the, a leader. A leader is not responsible for, I mean, the nation is responsible for the nation. A leader, there's no one leader who's responsible for America's fall, but a bad leader or an ungodly leader can help, will speed up the fall of the nation. A godly leader will help slow it down or turn it around, like Josiah sort of did. You know, so the, what's happening here is the, is the principle of window. We can have, you asked about, is judgment, judgment can still come. In other words, in other, and judgment can, you can have shaking in the time of, of a righteous leader. You can have, but you still can have, you can have revival and shaking at the same time. But the, but the ultimate thing is the window, if there's, if there's not revival in the window, the window comes to an end. And then wow. the dynamics continue and generally accelerate because, again, it's like that pent-up pent hate from the enemy goes back. That's why this, this period we have now is so crucial, mm -hmm. so crucial. The stakes in the election were far more yeah. gigantic they were. than what people think. They this were. was the end. Thinking people know America was at its end. Mm -hmm. I talked to Dan Betzer, mm -hmm. who is a delightful gentleman, but he, he was telling me America was making some final decision yeah. if we hadn't made this. It was sealing. It was, what was this? I mean, you know, this would have sealed everything. That, that's the problem. It would and have the, sealed. And with the Supreme Court situation, it would have for been absolutely a for a generation, and that would have affected every decision about religious liberty, about indoctrination of children, about paying for abortion. That's how big this election was. That's why this whole thing was a miracle. And it's not about a person. We don't. We're not putting our trust in politics, people, or or anything. That's not our trust. Mm -hmm. But God can use all things. Mm -hmm. And this was a miracle that that didn't happen. This was. You could use the word reprieve. You know, window or reprieve. We have an extra. We have extra time right now. And that's it. But if we don't use it, that that's that's the thing. We must use it. Remember, here's you mentioned Ronald Reagan, and I I have to say this because you mentioned that. And if you remember how things were back then. And remember that at that time it was Carter, and at that time America, it wasn't, America was not nearly as morally, you know, descended yes, as it sir. is now. But America and the world, everything was collapsing. The economy was collapsing, you know, the, the, the hostages in Iran, death to America, everything was collapsing, and it looked like it was going to be the end of the American age. And what happened is that Ronald, Ronald Reagan happened. Got, but the thing, it's not about Ronald Reagan, but... But you remember this, but months before all this happened, it wasn't about that. It was about God's people because they gathered in Washington, D.C. They gathered on the Washington Mall and they prayed. They had a gathering of repentance based on if my people will humble themselves and, and turn from there and pray and seek my face. I'll heal their land. So they did. They gathered there and they prayed for two major things. And, one, and the first major prayer, and I remember because I was there. I just became a believer. I wasn't even a year old in the Lord. And I was, I was led to go there. And two things, we all joined hands and prayed, Lord, 
Lord, release those hostages. Where the, this just happened a few days after the Pentagon sent in the helicopters. They crashed. America was helpless. Lord, you release them. And the second thing at the end was, and Ben Kinchler was there. He was calling for this. Yeah, I remember oh, yes. he was here. Yes. He said, put your hands towards the Capitol building, which is that, that Western terrace. And he, mm -hmm. he said, pray, Lord, we pray you bring into power those of your will, those who you want. Just bring them in. And so what happened is that next November, that was in the spring. That, what, you didn't even have the nomination yet. You didn't have, that next November was a revolution in the polls. Ronald Reagan gets swept in. The, moral, the, 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 the candidates being supported by Christians got swept in who were saying we need revival, we need a return. And Ronald Reagan makes a historic decision. He says, for the first time, I think since Andrew Jackson, like 100, you know, 40 years or whatever, he says, we're going to change where the inauguration took place. Instead of being on the eastern side with the, with the Supreme Court, let's change it to the other side. So he changed to the other side, which is the western terrace. So now he's standing on the very place where we pointed, lifted our hands and prayed God would put the people he wanted in there. Amazing. So now he's in the exact place. He's looking out, facing where all the believers were praying, if my people. So there he is. And since then, that's why the election is on. That's why the, not, the inauguration is on that ground, because of Ronald Reagan. But it's because of that prayer, because that's where all they were praying. So it was like God saying, I'm answering that prayer. In the same hour, there was that with second prayer, the same hour, the hostages, after more than a year, are released in that same hour, in that same, at the time of the inauguration, same place, God brought it all back to the same place where they all prayed. But I, and, and every, throughout the day, it was all, if my people, if my people, if my people, they kept doing that. They said, we believe your promise, Lord. And so what happened is that when Ronald Reagan, history changed, if you remember, not only spiritually, America all of a sudden started rebounding, the economy rebounded, the, the military rebounded, the Soviet Union began to collapse. I mean, it, it just, it was a cold morning in America. Mm -hmm. Change. But history changed at the moment Reagan had his hand on the Bible and his other hand raised. But his hand was not just on the Bible, his hand was on a scripture. The scripture upon which the world, the history of the world changed was, if my people who are called mm -hmm. by my name will humble themselves the same thing. Amen. God answered that prayer. He said, I will heal That's, their land. And yes. the reason, yes. the reason, the reason why he put it on there, he wasn't, I don't believe he was connecting it with that. With, I, he, I don't even know how much he knew about it. But the reason was, is that when he was a child, his mother, in, the, her, in his Bible, circled the words or underlined the words, if my people, that scripture, mm -hmm. and wrote next to it, this is for the healing of a nation. Mm -hmm. And so now it was the time that America needed to be healed. And God answered the prayers. Yes, yes. And so now, here's the thing. Every poll, do you remember after the election, all the pollsters were saying, we can't understand it. We can't understand, I'm talking about this election. Yes. We can't understand it. We apologize. Even some of them were apologizing. <laughs> we don't understand how the disconnect happened. He was supposed to lose by this much. There's no way he could have won the electoral vote. We don't know how. Well, the one thing they didn't factor into, into was Second Chronicles 7, 14. Mm -hmm. If my people are called by my name, they didn't yes. factor it in. And all around... They were all around America. I mean, I mean, a lot of the church was asleep, but a lot of the church was praying. People were praying. There were prayer gatherings. I know ever since the, I mean, with the Harbinger people were, were contacting and saying, we got to pray for America every day. We're going to pray. And they were all, I remember being on, on the, the lawn of, the, of Capitol Hill, that same lawn, and there's been a tent set up for over a year where people are praying nonstop all the time. People were praying, if my people. When, when Pence took the oath, he took it on Reagan's Bible. Yes. It was the same Bible, and, and it was a scripture, if my people. Same thing. God is saying, I'm still God, yes, and there's always is. hope. God is never out of ideas. He's never out of, out of plans, and he listened to the prayers of his people. So here we have been given another chance. The hope, again, is not a person, but it's what God did, wow. and this is our chance. If my people, I will heal their land. You see, if. these things would have been sealed if we would have had the same people. The same yeah. political systems. It this was against the gospel. Yes. Most people just don't understand it because they don't care. They don't live with it. But the people that have been in office, you know what's stopping the America from being totally decadent? It's the church. The it's the only church. the church. He said he'll build his church. And it's the church of Jesus Christ. But they, they are so angry. And you don't even understand what they're angry about. They're angry about, they're worried about the taking away of their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
Their sin style. That's what it is. Do you not get that? That's what it is. They will kill for it. They will murder for it. I mean, it was against God's people and against his ways. So yeah. it threatened to seal the future of America. Yeah. Now, I wanted to get to this. I've been trying to get to this for the last hour because it wanted to seal. We have for the first time again a hope that America will stop murdering its unborn children. Do you guys get this at all? Yes. Yeah. And so with, with the change of the courts and the, just mm. this little mm. adjustment, mm. there's hope. There is hope. There is hope. If you're, this, you remember we, we talked once about the, the, the disappearance of the gray and that things yes. are polarizing? Uh, yes. Well, this election had the most polarized conventions between the Democrats and the Republicans ever in our history. The Democratic convention, their platform, was the most brazenly anti-God, anti-biblical platform in the history of the Democratic Party. That the, it wasn't just the candidate. The entire platform was saying, we will remove the Hyde Amendment, which was since 1970s, saying, which says that none of your taxpayer uh, money can go directly for abortion. Well, they wanted it stripped now. It's the first time they kept mentioning abortion all the time. Mm -hmm. Usually they would say it with euphemism. They kind of, they wouldn't say it. But here they had the head of Planned Parenthood. This was the most brazen mm. convention ever. Uh, 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 and at the uh, same time, yeah. the, the Republican convention was one of the most conservative, right. biblically affirming conventions right. in, uh, in history. It's not about the parties. If they switch tomorrow their stance, then that's a, that changes it. The point is that, that you had such a polarization yes. by the sense. The Republican Party was pro-marriage, strongly, mm -hmm. str strongly pro-Israel, strongly pro-life, mm -hmm. strongly pro-religious liberty. You had, you had two gigantic, two different visions, two different, two different things, warfare over the future of America. That's right. And the, the darker one or the anti-biblical one was supposed to win overwhelmingly. That's right. So this is a miracle by God's hand. Thank okay, you. Okay, how could a million women mm. march mm -mm -mm. in the street of our capital mm. For the main reason, so they had the right to murder their children. Yeah. But nobody gets it. Mm -mm. We've gotten used to it. We call it family planning. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's God. He says, thou shalt not kill. God, yeah. And so this week, while Lori and I were away, we... I looked up at the news. Where was I? In Atlanta. We had just gotten off the plane. We're changing planes. And, 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 and you looked up. You said, look. Look who, just, look who just died. And I'm telling you, I looked up at that, at that monitor. And I said, oh, my God, Jim. Mm. Something is shifting in the spiritual realm. Oh, my God, you don't even know. I said, oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Norma McCorvey, who is, was used as the scapegoat, as the pawn. She, was, she never had an abortion. We met her. She's I met her. She's forever tied to abortion. Uh, She's blamed Roe for versus Roe Wade. versus Wade. She you was, know, if you don't Jane know who Rowe. she is, you should all know who she is. Google her. She was the Jane Roe. Jane Roe. In yes. the, yeah. in the Lori, room. Lori's talked to her. This woman has never had an abortion. No. She turned against abortion. She didn't want an abortion. Right. They were forcing her to go through with this stuff. And so we have a bill passed by a, because supposedly they're blaming on her. And she, she, that, those, her children are alive as far as I know. They're still yeah. All adopted out, yes. And, um, but, but she, and I said, Jim, this is huge. This is huge in the spiritual realm. I don't even think you get it right now. I said, I can hardly stand it right here. And we were waiting for James to get off the plane. And then I said, excuse me, I need, I just ha I need to go to the ladies' room. And I went into the stall of the ladies' room, and I just started weeping. Mm. Because this woman who we had the opportunity to tell her meet what she's told at you. NRB tell, tell her how, years Tell her what she said, ago. though. People won't believe what she told you personally. Well. And by the way, the videos of that interview look, look at that picture with back. her. She's, she's right She's back, back in there. She's there. right, that lady back in That's Mondo. That's funny Jim Baker <laughs> with black hair, strange. But anyway, that's Lori right there. Mm-hmm. 
This is important for people to understand. Yes. Lori interviewed her. And the world needs to hear it because they, most people believe a lie. They don't believe that Norma, I believe her name is Norma. Norma McCorvey. Mm -hmm. That I was there with you. What did she say to you? What well, did she say? Well, privately, off camera, I know because I have dealt so much with post-abortion and all this at Phoenix First Assembly for years and all that. But I, even though she didn't have an abortion, she had the, the grief of a post-abortive woman. I mean, her face was drawn, and I said, oh, my goodness, you are carrying, at that point, approximately 50 million babies, mm. the blood on your shoulders, the weight of it. Mm. And I said, Norma, mm. you've got to allow God to heal you in your innermost mm. being. Mm. You've got to let him go there and heal you because... You know, you're a born-again believer now, and, and God wants to heal you. You don't have to carry all that around, but she, Mondo was there. I, he I can, remember. He remembers but they had dumped it on her. Yes. yes. You know what she, she they, said? She was their scapegoat, and this is what they do. Yes. This is what these Antichrist people do. You're the one. She said this powerful word. She looked at you, and she said, I have lived the most miserable life any human being can live. She said, at night, I hear the baby's cries, the, oh, the right. torment. Yes. She used the word tormented. She did say that, Mondo. That led her to addictions of uh, drugs, alcohol, prescription. She just could not leave the torment of that. That's of the what cry. she said. And that's when you told her, you have to let God heal you, Norma. Yes. It was the most, I, I, again, this moment mm was not scripted, no. was not looked for. No. She saw us doing an interview with Paula White, yes. and she said, I overheard her mm -hmm. say, I need to get to Lori. I have to show her. The amazing thing about this picture, can you put that up? This did not connect with us until a few days ago. Uh, Rosalind uh -huh. Cook is mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that did a, an amazing sculpture of forgiveness. And Paula White was in that picture. Can not you in that, show that picture but, of Paula? There's a picture there with her with Norma, and here's the thing. Paula White, there she is, has, is the one who led originally Donald Trump to Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. You can clap. Now, you talk about <laughs> connections. Well, I, I know all you real big saints. <laughs> you know, knock Paula down, kick her for falling. But I want to tell you well, something. I love if Paula you knew White. what Paula White's been through in her life, if yeah, you knew that's what right. she is, you don't just let that. God judge them. That's it. That's God it. chose to use Paula White to lead our president to the Lord Jesus Christ. The president called Paula White to get my telephone number. <laughs> I know the connection. He, she gave him our personal number at home. And, and he called me to thank me because Paula White connected it. And it's Paula White who has been talking to us about us, my whole family, going to the White House. I'm so sick of criticism. These are people, all of them. You're perfect, but most of us aren't. <laughs> That's right. And we've got to reach out. And this woman carried this hell. She did. The woman who said she was the most unhappy woman in the world because she was blamed for all the abortions of some 50 million at that point, I right. guess. Right. So when I went into the stall of that bathroom just for a few minutes in the midst, once again, in the Atlanta airport, mm. I wanted to get on my face and just sob and sob mm. and sob. But I just was like, Lori, you got to hold it together. Buck it up. Get it together. Mm. And, and... I a few tears shed, and I said, Jesus, Jesus, I hope that my five kids are with Norma right now. I hope she's right there with my five, mm. along with all the 60 million plus that we know of that have been aborted, mm. that she That's gets heavy. to be reconciled mm. with them. And I really, I really believe, you know, God... God cares about every little mm. detail of our lives, doesn't he? Mm. Yes, he does. Mm. And I'm going to tell you something. Once again, Pastor Jim Garlow, Dr. Jim Garlow, 
one of the most brilliant men ever I've ever met. This man writes an article that I just read today, oh, Zach, yeah. and this powerful. is powerful. <clears throat> and he talks about Norma McCorvey's first church experience as a believer. Yeah. And there's so much to read, but maybe, Zach, we could just go through it quickly. Sure. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what I have highlighted here. Yes. It, says, it has been often noted that this case was built on a lie. That's right. Equally well known is that the fact that McCorvey felt very used by radical feminists at whose urging she was thrust into the national limelight. She would later explain that she never actually had an abortion and admitted the case was the biggest mistake of her life. But there is more, right, much God. more, mm. to the story. And that is McCorvey's first encounter with Christians after her conversion. Mm -hmm. She worked, worked in, in Dallas. Dallas out of a pro-abortion office. Pastor Flip Benham, leader of Operation Rescue Dallas at the time, worked nearby in a pro-life office. Through that, McCorvey met Flip. Although they were polar opposites on the abortion issue, Flip demonstrated the love of Christ to her. Flip was then and still is one of the greatest preacher prophets in America. He is likely one of the boldest, most courageous persons I have ever met. He is fearless, but he is also tender and loving. Now, McCorvey was stunned at Flip's gentle, Christ-like love. She thought pro-lifers were in accordance with pro-abortion reports, hateful and mean. What she encountered was the love of Jesus. Flip, who always carries a big Bible, began tenderly uh, to share the word with her. As a result, she received Jesus as Savior for her sins and became a new creature. In the summer of 1995, was baptized on August 8th. Now, since Flip and I were extremely close friends, she invited McCorvey to church where I was pastoring. What happened that day was almost as profound as her conversion. She was afraid to come to the church, and she did not know how Christians might respond to her. Given her identification with abortion, she arrived at the church building but was too fearful to come in. She drove around the parking lot several times trying to get the courage to get out of her car. She was afraid of what people might say to her or even do to her. Finally, she saw Flip standing on the church steps looking for her. She trusted him, so she parked her car and came to Flip. He escorted her into the church. She sat with Flip during the service, and I still recall exactly where they sat that Sunday, off to my left from the, my view from the platform about two-thirds of the way back of, of the church. With her and Flip's permission, I introduced her at the end of the service, telling the congregation that Jane Rowe of Roe vs. Wade had come to Christ and had experienced forgiveness for her sins. I explained that she was present in the auditorium. I asked her to stand. She did. The crowd erupted in extended standing ovation. McCorvey was shocked. She did not expect that. After the service ended, nearly the entire church congregation formed an extremely long line to give her a hug and welcome her into the family of God. It was a profoundly moving and tender moment. Norma McCorvey, the Jane Roe of the infamous Roe vs. Wade case, had not only experienced the love and forgiveness of Jesus, she had now experienced the love and forgiveness of the body of Christ, the church. It was an exhilarating day for us all. And McCorvey would later say in a television ad, you read about me in, his, in the history books, but now I am dedicated to spreading the truth about preserving the dignity of all human life from natural conception to the natural death. And she ends with this. It ends with this. During the first half of her life, she was on the wrong side of history, but that changed when she repented of her sins. She joined the right side of history, but more importantly, she now enjoys the right side of eternity. That's it. Brilliant. That's news of the day. Amen. We will be right back after this special message. Now you can have the latest revelations, mysteries, and messages from Rabbi Jonathan Kahn in the all-new The Mysteries, Volume 20, The Mystery of the Kings, and more. These eight stunning revelations are revealed for the very first time anywhere in The Tracing of Your Life you'll discover the master plan and blueprint that exists for every moment of your life. Then open the deep and wonderful mystery of you and Jesus that will change forever the way you read the gospel in the mystery called the identical. How can you have breakthrough in your walk, your relationships, your calling, even breakthrough over habits and sins? Learn the specific keys you need to guarantee the breakthrough in your life 
in the momentum secret of breakthrough. Then the answer, where are we now? Judgment or revival? And what it means for your life revealed in Josiah's window. The mystery of the Yarden will show you the secret of God, of Jesus, and your life, and how to live in God's greatest blessings. You will also receive a bonus DVD called The Cup of Reeling, Jerusalem. Discover why the ancient city of Jerusalem is the center of current events and the future of the world. This 8 DVD collection is available nowhere else. Go online to our website now to get Rabbi Khan's latest mysteries for a donation of $55 or more to the ministry. You can also receive the Study of the Mysteries offer for a donation of $85 or more to the ministry. In this offer, you'll receive The Mysteries, Volume 20, The Book of Mysteries, and the brand new Book of Mysteries Prayer Journal. You can record your thoughts and prayers on these pages that correspond to each mystery. This book comes in a beautiful leather-like binding with the lettering impressed into the cover. You'll also receive the Harbinger Man DVD as a special bonus when you order the Study of the Mysteries offer for a donation of $85 or more to the ministry. Call right now, toll free, 1-888-988-1588. Or write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. You can also donate online at jimbakershow.com. Thank you for your continued prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. What church did she go to? She was, uh, which blew me what, away. Where, where she went there that, and got saved. At the Metroplex Church Chapel, Church of the Nazarene. That's what I was born and raised. I was born and, and raised. And in Lori, Nazarene her mom, church. they all were in the church I'm of like, the Nazarene. I'm like, look at that, so, Jim, once again. The Nazarene production. strike again. Isn't yeah, that good? Love it, love yes. it, love it. But Love you, Dr. Jim Garlow. Absolutely. Thank you for this. Thank you for and, this. And they can go to the JimBakerShow.com to read more about this article, download it, pass it around. This will encourage you. The power of words is in the tongue. Life and death encourage people. People need to know about the power of forgiveness. This is what it's all about. The true forgiveness comes from the heart, from love. I'm, I'm a shy boy, really, from Muskegon, Michigan, and I'm a nobody from nowhere, really. You, you saw where I came from, the little teeny house I was born into, you know, but God has directed my path yes, sir. my entire life. I'm serious. Beyond anything, I ought to write a book about the walk I walked, where I've been, and what. but again, this woman crossed your path, Lori, crossed my path. And you had the chance to help her. Yes. And I believe you helped her be healed because I so. the church many times doesn't heal people. They hurt, they hurt people. Yes. And uh, she was a broken, broken woman. Yes. And they used her. Mm -hmm. But that's what the devil does. He uses you and then he dumps you. She wouldn't have come to God if she hadn't seen a man who gave love of God to yes. her and met her there on a church that loved people. And I think Zach and I were both blown away when we realized that, that, that the Benham brothers who... It I'm, was the Benham brothers, the famous Benham brothers, who've been persecuted for their stance on righteousness. It was, it was them, it was actually their dad that brought uh, Norma to Pastor Garland. Most people church. don't know what happened to those two guys. Why, why were they hurt? Yeah, sure. Don't use the name of the network. Okay. But it, let's just say it's house stuff, remodeling yeah. network. And um, they took a, a strong stand for traditional marriage. But I want to tell you, the, the liberals are not liberal. No. no. Only oh are they liberal oh. about sin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, are yeah. judgmental when it comes to our belief in the word of the living God. That's, That's right. This is so important. I'm really, I'm really concerned what's going on. They are rebranding our president to be a Hitler. Oh. Hitler murdered hundreds of millions of people. How could that be? Trump has not murdered one person. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, and our young people are sucking this stuff in. Yes, they are. I mean, 
forgive me, but I just mentioned the Trump's uh, daughter. Ivanka. Has had a line of clothing, you know, it's you know, horrible. destroying her line of clothes Ridiculous. and her and her stuff, her, yeah. and doing it to hurt her dad. And that's liberal. It's evil. There's there's such a it's a warp, and this is what God spoke to me, on while I was away and had time to listen and pray. God said, "There's going to be warfare in the church like never before. So you need to get your battle." armor out. you got to have the full armor of God. Daily. You can't let them do this. You have to say no. That's what we did. That's why I fought in the spirit for this election. Yes. I was calling the who's who of, of being able to speak on this subject to bring them to this program. And, and I watched and listened and every bit of it. And you know, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Come on. But uh, I, I haven't told Lori this, <laughs> but Ivanka, can I I can't pronounce Ivanka. Her. Ivanka. Mm -hmm. Ivanka has a, a per perfume line. And you know what I'm going to do? And you can mock me, laugh at me, do whatever you want. I'm going to buy Lori the biggest bottle <gasps> of perfume from Ivanka. Yes. From Ava Amazon, because I can go there. No. Yes. And I just have to, I just have to, Vent sometime. We're up here in the hills. How many know that? I'm a hillbilly. You know that? I've always wanted to be a hillbilly. I tell all the hillbillies around here, I just, and some of them actually make me an honorary hillbilly. And some of you think because we're up here in the hills that it's not important how we treat this place or how we treat Jim or how we treat this whole thing. Because it's like, oh, we're just up here. You're not a big city church. Do you know how many people were at church last night? We probably had half a dozen in here or something. I mean, we don't try to get big crowds in here. This is just a, a place for people to come to church that live here, just, you know, and the visitors that want to be here. But the crowd that was watching on television last night was almost a quarter of a million people. God's trying to do something. Do you know the thing that holds back God? A, a church or a house divided can't stand. God forgives. Amen. Is this, remember the Assembly of God billboards years ago. Do you remember? God forgives. Let him. <laughs> Amen. That's my thought for today. Amen. I have to preach once in a while. Amen. Oh, boy. I, I, I love this word that you used to tell me when we met 20 years ago. You said, I used to preach by faith. Now I preach by experience. And that with faith, it's a powerhouse. Boy. And what you teach us today, us young preachers need to learn a lot before we go out and build the world. And, and I was one of those that was traveling all over the world before I met you, and God told me in Denmark to go back home and get to know him. Mm -hmm. And I called you, and I said, I'm tired. I'm speaking six times a day. I, I feel like God is calling me to go back home. What do I do? And you said, I've been praying for you. Come back home. Get to know him. And that's when I started getting back into the word of God and learning about every word that Jesus spoke. 20 years later, here I am. <laughs> and I promise that you, your experience going through prison has saved my life. So thank you because what you preach is experience for us young guys and girls to follow him. Well, you know, one of the reasons I'm preaching again after prison is I went to the Dream Center to hide, really. And I came out of hiding. You did. To go. I ended up at the Dream Center. Tommy invited me to come. And Tommy was the one of the first. In fact, I think the first public appearance I made yes. after prison was that. We will be right back after this special message. I mean, right now, as we're talking, and um, the, the whole situation with the Orville Dam in California, which basically 
because of it was a bad leadership call. I've been saying that it was bad leadership because what took place was they were saying, listen, don't evacuate, don't evacuate. There's not going to be problems. There's not going to be problems. There's not going to be problems. And then out of absolutely nowhere, they had to give an emergency uh, evacuation notice and say, be gone within 60 minutes. And even reporters actually went in there and took pictures of like a local Denny's and all the food is still on the table. I mean, people literally were like running for their lives, 60 minutes. And, and yet, now praise God that didn't end up happening. The dam didn't end up breaking, but 200,000 individuals were in a, an environment that they were not used to. Don't wait until it's an emergency. Don't wait until, you know, you have to get back into a corner. Then it's too late. Zach, we've got a, a deluxe bucket that we're offering today. Absolutely. We're, we're, you're gonna, you, you better get calling right now, 888-988-1588. Their deluxe bucket, which you all know, but we're gonna go over it again, is just $100. That's right. Now, this deluxe bucket is actually a, even a retail value of three hundred and seventy-eight dollars, which is in, in, incredible. Now, but for the restoration marathon, we're offering this bucket for a donation of only one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. Now, this bucket actually has three hundred and seventy-four servings, which is incredible. And I want to go ahead and, if you don't mind, I'm going to read through some of the things that Please. is in this. Remember, this is the deluxe bucket for only a hundred dollars during this restoration marathon time. You're going to receive several different items like maple brown sugar oatmeal, buttermilk pancakes, honey wheat bread, black bean burgers, which we're cooking right now. We have some pizza crust and some pizza sauce and pizza cheese and, and uh, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, one of Pastor Jim's favorites, and the Italiano marinara. We have the macaroni. We also have creamy chicken and rice. We have Spanish rice, the cheesy broccoli rice. We have white rice. We have potatoes. We have hearty vegetable chicken soup, creamy potato soup, chocolate pudding for some dessert, and morning mousse low-fat milk. And during this, we're actually during in the deluxe bucket, we're going to be throwing in some bonuses as well, just some different toppings and, and things to add in there, like cheese powder. You can put cheese on everything, even more cheese in your macaroni or, or whatever you want to do with that. Also, honey powder. Now, we want to get into sharing some things. you got a cook pot here, cook. you got pots, you got a hot plate. Why don't you go ahead and drop those down? We want to get you prepared. Now, contrary to a hamburger, um, Number one, it's just hydrate, smack it together, and put it on the grill, brown the sides. It is, it, yeah. it's mass. I mean, that thing's going to weigh yeah, a pound. You're getting, you're getting. Good, I'd be interested. Good we got it. If we had a scale, I would I, well, all the way down. Yeah. It should. Oh, and they don't shrink like your burgers. That yeah. you know, you bake your burger, put on there, and it's like half the size of your bun when you're all done. All right. Uh, oh, oh, for, oh, okay. Hey, I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take it. That is a big burger. I didn't know if I could open my mouth that big. You just didn't slap this formula together. I know Pastor Jim was very, I mean, he is the, the very strictest critic of all the foods, Mark. Absolutely. And um, I think we went back to the drawing board just to polish up the edges, but you guys hit it out of the park with this one. This He's called this the best black bean burger we've ever offered. While you're on the phone, help us out. Give a donation today. We really, really, really need your help. We're talking food for a day for less than, you know, dollars. And it's just an amazing offer, and uh, we should take advantage of it. Uh, please help yourself. Help us. Help you. Help your friends. Help your family. Help the ministry. A uh, $100 offer today would be fantastic from every single person that could possibly give one. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm helping you guys. So You're helping us. You're helping the ministry. Oh, it's amazing. Thank let's you. let's Thank do you. everything we can for each other. Right. You can donate to this ministry by calling 1-888-988-1588 or write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. But you know, yeah. I love you back into life. And that's all I knew what to do. I didn't know what else to offer. I didn't have any connections with you other than I love you. And I said, I love you, man. And I meant it with my heart, not gaining anything out of it other than I love you. 
because I didn't want to see you die. I didn't want to see you go into the depression road, and, and, and no one deserves that kind of life. That, that torment that we talked about with Norma was the same kind of torment I saw in you of people just eating at you. And you're trying to figure out how am I going to get all these things and put it back together. Love restores. And every day you went out at the Dream Center and you served the community quietly. You know, it's time for the church to wake up and do what we did with the election. It's time to turn it back to God. It's time to see the miracle of the renewal of the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because this is the great harvest time. Yes. And it's time to have vision. Yeah. Because without a vision, people the people perish. will perish. perish. Rabbi, so, yeah, it's yeah, such an you. honor. No, always, always, and, always. And, always, and, always, and if you want to get his new mysteries yeah. entirety, and there's eight of them, so that's about eight hours probably mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. mysteries mm -hmm. that are in this set. That's right. And uh, the whole kit and caboodle is $85 along with the brand new prayer journal that's right that you Beautiful get you get this yeah. you get the prayer journal yeah and then you and get the book. what's the book made from the prayer journal mm -hmm. a great page after page of it all that's right and then of course you're going to get the harbinger, way, the harbinger man video and if you want to ask for the free historic interview with ronald reagan and myself that's a bonus. You have to ask for it, though. Right. That's just for people who, who ask for it, okay? Yes. yes. So it's not for sale. It's just for free. Right. And we only have a short <laughs> window of time with this. We don't have this for very long. So you need to call right now, 1-888-988-1588, or go to jimbakershow.com, or you can still write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Do it now. Don't, don't think about it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. The phone and and just just get it done. Just and like like Nike. I, they say, just do it. Just do I, it. You know. And I want to ask everybody who'll help us finish this telethon with great victory. Yes. And for everyone, we have we about seven hundred people. We figure, and we have seven hundred. Oh of yes. My, this is the Donald Co Trump. It's collector. This piece. this. Him. But it's the fifty eight presidential inauguration it's not the 15th president because it but it they some mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. inaugurated mm -hmm. you know more than once but the 58th president inauguration and it's donald trump it says on there washington dc and uh i i wish you could see it it's as beautiful. good as it is it is really i bought it personally mm -hmm. i picked it out I, found, I looked at. Yes. I looked everywhere I went. Yes. I looked for yes. one thing I wanted. You did. This is the only thing I bought. Lori bought more, of course, <laughs> but I bought this this pin. And anybody who just, you know, love what God's doing, you can order this. So what what do we call this deal? Yes, uh, so this is actually... Is there a name of it on the screen? It's, a, it's to give thanks for what happened. It's called a glory... It's glory to God. We're giving glory to God. Oh, the, oh yes. yeah. Amen. Yeah, and I like those kind of... I, I wanted to praise God for helping us with this election. Amen. So I wanted to, you know, God be the glory. You know, glory to God right. offering. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and it's going to come wanted, with the entire video of all the incredible interviews.